Okay, so here we go again. Today I will be sharing our curriculum picks for fourth grade for the 2023-2024 school year. In case you're new around here, hi, my name is Sarah. And this year I will be homeschooling all five of my kiddos. They are preschool, kindergarten with special needs, fourth grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade. So yeah, feeling, feeling a little bit overwhelmed, but it's gonna be a great year. Today I wanna to talk all about my middle child, my fourth grader, Mariah. She is currently age nine, gonna be 10 when the next school year starts. And I just wanna share all of the, the things I have picked out for her to do this school year. Something you may notice before I get into all of these curriculum picks is that I'm trying to simplify a little bit, in particular for Mariah this year. Homeschooling all five kiddos this year, having a couple of high schoolers, it, it just feels like a lot. And so I, I already can tell that I'm, I'm having the tendency of spreading myself a little bit too thin. And so wherever possible, I'm trying to get my kids to be able to be a little bit more self-sufficient, a little bit more independent. So I'm gonna work really hard this year to maybe not have Mariah need me to be sitting shoulder to shoulder with her for every single subject. Um, and so you'll probably see that highlighted in subjects like history and science. I'm really trying to get back to basics of listening to a lesson, drawing a picture, writing out your thoughts in a notebook about it, um, getting back into some basic notebooking. But yeah, you might notice that in these curriculum picks today that I, I am simplifying for my own sanity. Now, I will try to link as much as I can down below in the description box, but I would also point you to my website. I have been little by little working on it and revamping it, and there you will find all of my curriculum picks organized and listed out with links some of them affiliate, just being upfront right there about that. But everything was organized by grade, by subject, and you can easily peruse all of our favorites as far as curriculum goes and, and a lot of other things too. So check out my website if you want more information. All right, so let's just jump into this. I'm gonna go subject by subject. Let's start off with math. This is usually the first official school subject that Mariah does every morning and it should be no shock to any of you that she is going to be continuing through Math UC. Math UC is the only really math curriculum that we have used as a family throughout the last 12 years or so. And it's just, it's a really good fit for us. So currently Mariah is working her way through Gamma. Um, she'll continue to work through this into the summer and probably even beginning in the fall. And then when she has completed Gamma, we'll move into Delta. Now, that's one of the things I love about Math UC is it is not grade-based, but it is skill-based. And so it's a mastery program and you just continue working at your child's pace and you don't move on until they have mastered the concept at hand. And so now that I have done, gosh, well, Noah went from primer all the way, he's gonna be doing geometry next year, my 10th grader. Um, I, I have just learned that with Math UC, with math, it comes in waves. Sometimes they will just fly through a book or fly through several lessons and sometimes they'll slow down and get a little bit stuck and it'll take a while. And so I just, I don't let it bother me. We just keep plugging along year after year and I, I don't care about which book we're in to start the year, just as long as they are making forward progress. Now, that's true of Matthew C, but that's true of any curriculum, honestly, as homeschoolers. We have the freedom to just Make sure that our child is making forward motion and, and just use that as your guidepost. All right, so just another thing I wanted to mention to go along with Matthew C, something that I picked up new this spring for Mariah, um, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. This is Sue Dixon's Songs That Teach Us Level Two Musical Math Facts. Now, I actually picked up this entire curriculum for Ezra, uh, Mariah's younger brother. But I went ahead while I was doing the order and I got this level two because this has musical math facts to go along with all of your multiplication and all of your division facts. And so I thought that this would just be a fun little add-on for her as she is working through math, you see, if she needs something supplemental, she can listen to this, watch the DVD. It wasn't a very expensive curriculum, honestly. It's a little bit dated, as you can probably see from the labeling here, but that's okay. I'm just really in it for the content, not for what it looks like. All right, so Matthew C. and Musical Math Facts. All right, next up, language arts. Let's start with handwriting. Mariah is going to be working through a reason for handwriting, T. 
Now this is a combination book. It is manuscript as well as cursive, both two in one book, which I love. Uh, Mariah can kind of go back and forth, one day do print, one day do cursive. I, I want her to be practicing both of those skills. So I just, I love this workbook for that. This is also something that she can use completely independently now that she has kind of graduated out of handwriting without tears. She has really mastered making all of those letters on her own in you know, the correct strokes. Instead of having her do lessons, I tend to set a timer and I have her do the most perfect handwriting she can do in whatever color, whatever medium she wants to write in for 10 minutes. And then once the timer is up, she is done. So that's how we handle handwriting is 10 minutes a day using colored pens and pencils and markers. And we just um, go back and forth between cursive and print. Next up, no surprise again, is spelling UC. Now we've kind of slowed down in this curriculum actually uh, just a little bit. Last year, Mariah's reading just really skyrocketed. And so I kind of paused some of our other curriculum just to really let her just fly in her reading. I wanted her to have lots of extra reading time because she just, I don't know, I feel like she just kind of hit a developmental marker and just went from reading small little reader books to big chunky chapter book. Like she just really has gotten into reading. And so I slowed down on some of her other curriculum to really give her space there. So we paused, well not paused, but really slowed down spelling UC. We went from doing it, you know, every single day to once or twice a week. We're gonna finish level C this year. And if we get through um, both books of this, we will move into level D. Now, this was on my curriculum picks for Mariah last year. This is IEW's Bible Heroes Writing Lessons in Structure and Style. And this is Mariah's first introduction to IEW. Uh, she has watched some of the structure and style videos with her older brothers and sisters as they have gone through IEW, uh, but this will be the first time she is actually doing it on her own. I had hoped to get to this um, for her third grade year, and to be honest, like it's May, we're not done with school. We won't be done with school until the end of the summer. So if we can, with swim team and such, we will pick this up and maybe start this early for the end of her third grade year but we'll really like lengthen this out. This will take us at least all of fourth grade. So I'm just really excited for her to jump into IEW. It is our writing curriculum of choice. We just, we love, love, love it. So I'm excited. This will be a new one for me. I haven't used this curriculum with any of my kids yet. Um, this specific Bible Heroes one, but I always have wanted to. So th this will be really fun. Now this next one, it might be a little, a little bit of a head scratcher here. I have first language lessons for the well-trained mind. And this is a very old edition. I bought this secondhand probably, gosh, over a decade ago. Um, this is actually a combination of level one and level two in one read aloud book. It's not even a workbook. So you might be able to find this online somewhere secondhand. But this is just a way that I like to gently introduce grammar to my kiddos. I don't like to have them jumping in heavy handed into grammar until middle school. Um, so for my elementary school kids, I love going through this book very slowly and just kind of introducing them to the different parts of speech. There's poetry memorization here. There, there, there's other things in this book as well. And so this is something that I have just kind of picked up from time to time and included in our morning time, um, done little by little here and there with Mariah. But this year I'm going to be very intentional of making sure we get through all of the lessons in this book that I, that I really want her to hit in elementary school before we jump into middle school. All right, and then for literature, I, I don't know if you would bucket that under language arts or its own category. Um, I have this big stack of books here as well as a new literature log for Mariah. Now I've done an entire video dedicated to what we do with literature logs, how we use it in our homeschool, but essentially it's just my kids reading good literature, drawing good illustrations and writing narrations about what they are reading. And so I'm just being pretty intentional this year of having a nice stack of books that I want Mariah to be able to peruse through and choose from um, every day when she's doing her free reading literature time. So I'll run through and show you guys all of these books, but this is just gonna be her little bookshelf for the school year and she can pick and choose and pull which books from here that she wants to read. She's actually already kind of started and started reading a couple of these chapter books, um, which just makes my heart so happy. 
Um, so yeah, this these will be her literature picks for the year. So for history, geography, social studies, what, whatever you want to label that whole section of subjects, I actually don't have a physical product to show you, so I'll just put a visual in here. But Mariah is going to work through listening to Story of the World. Several years ago, I purchased all of the audio CDs for volumes one, two, three, and four. And so we are just going to use that as the core of her history curriculum this year. Her older brother and sister who are in high school are going to be studying world history this year. So I just thought it would be wonderful for her to do world history as well, but down at her level. I am gonna do something a little different. I am really simplifying this. And my plan is, is to have her listen to the audio CD. And while she listens, we are just going to do some very basic notebooking. This is just a spiral bound notebooking notebook that I got at a conference a while back. It has lines as well as spaces for illustration. And so my thought process is for her to draw a picture while she is listening to the audio lessons and then afterwards have her do a written narration of what she learned that I can help her with. So maybe sometimes I will write it out for her and she'll just dictate it to me or maybe I'll write it down and she can copy it, or if she's you know, really wanting to, she can write it out on her own. Um, but just doing some basic, you know, kind of old fashioned notebooking skills. I just really wanted this to be simple and easy for her. So to go along with this, I just pulled some things out of my basement. Um, I had a bunch of these. I got these, again, secondhand years ago, the Draw and Write series, uh, Draw and Write Through History. So I thought these would be kind of fun reference tools that she can look at to use to draw different things that we are studying in history. And then I also have the big Kingfisher History Encyclopedia, which again, I just think this will be a great reference tool to open up to what we're learning about in the chapter that week to allow her to have some pretty big visuals to go along with this really great living history book that we're gonna be listening to. Now, with Story of the World, I know that they have their big activity books with all kinds of reading lists and things that you can, I mean, it's a really big beefy curriculum if you want to do it. Um, but we're just going to kind of do it bare bones. We're going to do it really simple and we're just going to listen to the CD, do an illustration, write out a narration, and, and use kind of these reference guides to help draw and write different things. Okay, and then moving on to science. Again, I'm kind of pairing what Mariah is doing with her older siblings. Her older siblings are taking biology this year. So I thought this would be the perfect year for her to do life sciences. So again, these are older editions. I already had them in my homeschool library. Um, but these are God's design for life. I have the world of plants, the world of animals, and this is a really old one, um, God's Design for Life, the Human Body. Now, when I originally purchased these, these were put out by Answers in Genesis. Um, I believe Master Books is maybe the one putting them out now, but I did these books with Noah and Leah when they were in elementary school, and we just really, really enjoyed them. Uh, you do all three books in one year, and they're just really nice. I think Mariah will be able to read some of this on her own. Some of this I will read with her. But again, very similar to history. My plan is, is to just have her keep a notebook, a science notebook where she is drawing a picture. Maybe if it's studying a plant, she draws a picture of a flower and labels the different parts of the flower that she learned about that day. Or if we're studying animals, she looks up an animal in the animal encyclopedia that she learned about and draws it and writes out some facts. Um, I really just wanna get back to basics with her of just very simple reading, drawing pictures, writing narrations. And so that's what we're going to do for science this year, using this as our spine. We will go through all three of these books and keep a science journal or a science notebook as we go. The other thing I'm going to do is try to pair some hands-on activities. Mariah is very much a hands-on learner. Um, so I'm trying to like 
piece together and pull some things that maybe that her siblings are gonna be doing. For instance, I found this look inside a frog, an easy to assemble frog model. Um, so when her siblings are doing a frog dissection, she could do a frog model. So kind of the same idea, but on her level. Uh, so I'm really excited for science this year. Science and history, again, they're kind of in the same vein. Uh, I'm just really trying to simplify things with having to homeschool all five kiddos this year and having two in high school. And I just, I, I'm really feeling the pressure of it. And so I'm trying to simplify wherever possible. And then for electives. Now these I view as just extras in our homeschool. We fit them in when we can fit them in. Um, if we get through half of one of these courses in a year, great. I, I don't allow myself to be a slave to these. These are just like bonuses. Uh, so first and foremost, Maria is taking piano lessons. That's something she does every single week. She practices every day and absolutely loves it. She's doing really well. So we will continue with piano lessons. We are also going to continue doing some art lessons for her. She loves, loves doing art and drawing. As you can see in a lot of her curriculum that I've picked out for her, it's intentionally allowing her to express herself through art. Um, but I did want something a little structured for her. So she is going to do this drawing with graphite pencils. This is Art Core 1, the beginner levels from Artistic Pursuits. Um, it is a DVD course where she can watch a DVD and then do a project to go along with it. I have done these with my older kids in the past. We've really enjoyed just about everything we've purchased from Artistic Pursuits. So I think this will be a really good fit for her. If she flies through this and finishes this, I also have Art Core 2, which is, I think it's watercolor painting. Um, so she could do a painting course as well if, if she finishes this. Another elective, and this is something you've seen in my curriculum picks here for a while, and it just goes to show how I like to be very gentle in my approach to electives with my kids. But this is Song School Spanish. Uh, we've been slowly but surely plugging along through this book. We're almost to the end and we will be getting ready to go into book two of Song School Spanish. This is just a very introductory level um, to the language of Spanish. You're, you're learning a lot of labeling and a lot of nouns and it's just really fun. There's music and a DVD. It pairs really well because Mariah's older siblings are taking Spanish for high school. So she feels like she is included with what they're doing, but again, on her own level at her own pace. So I'm hoping to finish this book this year and move into book two. Another elective that I want to make sure I mention on here is computer time. Uh, a couple times a week after chores, Mariah has time that she gets to spend on the computer in our kitchen and she does a, one of two things normally. She either works through Keyboarding Without Tears. This is a program um, that's from Learning Without Tears or Handwriting Without Tears that teaches your child how to type correctly. Um, so she'll do a few lessons in that. And then we also have a subscription to ABC Mouse that she really loves to get on there with my little ones and, and work through that as well. And so this is just a nice little reward for her, an educational screen time reward that she gets to do a couple times a week. Um, so it's definitely keyboarding and just some computer literacy skills uh, that I, I think is really helpful for her at this age. All right, and then Bible, you guys know, I don't like calling this a subject on my channel because we would study Bible whether we homeschooled or not, but this is a good place for me to plug it in. Mariah will be independent with her Bible reading again this year, and we are going to have her read through, gosh, I might butcher this name. Is it Edgar Meyer's Bible Storybook? I was gifted this years ago from a fellow homeschooler and I read this aloud to Noah and Leah. We really, really enjoyed it. And I think Mariah should no problem be able to read this on her own. I love this storybook Bible in particular because there are um, narration questions in the back that go along with every single story. So when I wanna go over her Bible lesson with her, I can just open up to right where she was and ask her a few questions about what she read and it provides the answers right there for me. So so that's really helpful just to generate good discussion. Um, navigating everybody doing their own Bible lessons can, can be a lot to juggle sometimes. Um, so I like having this as a guide. This does have some illustrations in it, but it does not have an illustration for every single story. 
So this will be a big jump for her. I think she's re she's really excited. She really wants to start reading bigger, chunkier books. It has an illustration like every other page or so. So it'll be a jump for her, but I, I think it'll be a really good fit. All right, guys, well, that wraps it up. That is everything that I am hoping to use with my fourth grader this year. This is a, a lot of curriculum. So just please know that we are year round homeschoolers and my kids by no means use all of this every single day. We kind of piecemeal things together, um, do some things some days, some, some items for just a season. It just kind of depends. Uh, but I wanted to put all of it here in one place for you guys as a reference. So I, I hope that that's encouraging and helpful to you. If you have not done so already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Today's video is part of a series where I am sharing curriculum picks for all five of my kids, as well as a morning time or group subject uh, video where I'm going to share what we're doing during our morning time. You're not going to want to miss any of those. So please, please, please subscribe. All right, guys, hope that you are having a great week. See you later.